Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. In this section, we're going to switch gears a little bit from the triple integration that we've been doing since the beginning, and we're going to go back and, and do something very important, kind of transition into the kind of the third chapter of Calculus 3, the third you know, act of Calculus 3, and that's all about vector fields, okay? So what we're going to do in this section is we're going to talk about vector fields, and then specifically we're going to talk about the divergence and the curl of vector fields, which are all things that sound foreign now, but I'll make it clear for you as we go along, okay? What is a vector field? It's very, very important. We've talked about vectors in the Cal 3 Tutor Volume 1 that I know that you've already looked at. In the very beginning, a lot of information on vectors. You know, a vector is just a you know, something has a magnitude and a direction. It's got three components, X, Y, and Z components, and it's basically an arrow that kind of points somewhere. So at this point in space, there could be a vector pointing over there, okay? Now, let me ask you this. Put that in the back of your head. What is a function, a regular old function? You put three numbers, X, Y, and Z, into a function, outspits a number, okay? That's what a function is. There's a value of temperature here and a value of temperature here and here and here, and I can write a function that will tell me as a function of space what the temperature is, okay? Now let's combine those two things. A vector field is a function, so to speak, so that when I put x, y, and z into this function, at every point in space it returns a vector, a different vector, okay? So every point in space has a, its own uniquely defined vector. And um, if you can kind of imagine this room kind of filled with these little arrows that point different directions, at every point in space here is a little arrow that points in a different direction. That's a vector field. Vector fields are all around us, okay? There's an electric field in this room, there's a magnetic field in this room. You can't see it, but it's there. And at every point in space, there's a little electric field that has a magnitude and a direction. So you can kind of think of it as an arrow at every little point. And so there's there's infinite number of these little arrows everywhere, and the sum total of all of that is called a vector field, okay? Something that may be a little bit more tangible to you. If you kind of think of a um, a garden hose and the water coming out of the end of a garden hose. You know, the water comes out and it kind of arcs and kind of goes down. Well, inside of that, you know, um, stream of water that's coming out, the water is traveling more or less at the same velocity coming out, but you can kind of think of the flow as kind of, kind of a vector field, really. At every point inside of that water hose and every point in the stream as it comes out and every little point all the way up and down the stream and all the way along the cross section the velocity of the water is going to be slightly different from the velocity you know right next right next uh, to that little particle so if you were to kind of look at the cross section of a pipe or something and the the water that goes through that pipe the the water near the very edge of the pipe may be traveling slower or faster than the water in the center of the pipe and so velocity is a vector, right? It has a magnitude and a direction. So sort of the water that's flowing in a pipe is a vector field. Basically the velocity of the water is a vector field. And at every different point, the, the, the velocity of the water at that specific point is going to be a little bit different and it may be a little bit uh, pointed in a different direction. You know, you can kind of think of these little vortices that come off of a, off of a jet engine or or, you know, you kind of see the little wispy things that come off of an airplane wing. Well, you can kind of think of that as a vector field. You know, that at every point in space, you know, the velocity of the air might be a little bit different. It might be twisting. It might be turning. It might be kind of going end over end. That's kind of a vector field, okay? I'm trying to give you a lot of examples to, to, to help you think about what this stuff is because as we plow through a lot of math, you might lose the forest for the trees. What we're talking about is really identifying vector fields, and we're going to do a lot of math with them. And they're all over the place. All of these examples I'm giving you are real life things that, that people study. Airplane wings, fluid flow, electromagnetism, all of that stuff is vector field stuff. And if you're really going to do work with it, you're going to have to know how to handle the calculus. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I've given you the big picture idea of what a vector field is. Let's look at a couple of quick examples. These aren't really problems that you would probably see in a book. I'm just trying to, trying to give you some ideas, okay? In two dimensions, what if I had... Uh, because sometimes it's easier to start in two dimensions. What if I had a vector field uh, like this? The vector field might be written like this. The, the bar on top means vector, just like, just like always. X comma Y, because I'm talking about two dimensions. X comma Y, okay? Uh, let's say I'm, the vector field is X in the I direction. 
uh, plus y in the j direction. Don't forget i just means x unit vector and j means y unit vector. Well, what would this look like? Basically, what you're, what you're saying here is, is at every point x and y, okay, at every point x and y you put in here, you get a vector back. And that vector is a little arrow that, that points. Now, if you were to take your time and actually uh, kind of do this, what you would find is that the vector field would kind of, they would have longer arrows the farther away you got because x and y are getting bigger, and so the vector's getting longer. And so you would have something like this. Okay, because the farther away you get along in x and y, the longer away, uh, the longer the vector is. Now, if if y is zero and you're only going to go along x, it's the same kind of thing. You're pointed in the i direction. Okay, at every point you go along x, you're still pointed in the i 